All right, guys, Jason Greystone here from Trade Empowered. Uh, you may see a few changes over the last couple of weeks. Akil's been posting on this channel, and uh, over the you know over the next few weeks and years, you'll see all of the coaches here at Trade Empowered posting content onto this channel. So it's opened out the channel and really given you guys who aren't familiar with the other coaches, uh, other than Jason Stapleton. Um, and, and give you an insight into their trading styles as well. So you'll see Akil's posted a video already. Charles is, uh, has posted a video also on the Forex Market Preview. And we're going to try and keep that momentum going and that consistency as we go forward. So it's a good chance and a good opportunity for us to uh, introduce ourselves to people on this channel that don't necessarily know uh, us. So there's many people on this channel. I have my own YouTube channel. Akil has his own YouTube channel. And uh, it's a good place to put that content for those of you who aren't familiar with the other coaches. So um, I wanted to do a video. It's today's live room just to give you an insight into the London live room because many of you might not even know that there's a London live room. Akil runs our, U, uh, our New York session live room. Okay, and I run the London live room from 8 a.m. to 11 a.m. London time, so on the London Open. And uh, we opened that room on the 1st of December last year, and we had a massive, massive turnout. It was completely underestimated. Uh, we've since had tons and tons of members of the room who have been there since day one, and we're now seven months in. It's incredible how quickly the time's gone. So uh, I thought I'd give you an insight into the room. Um, we're going to go over some of the analysis this morning uh, in this morning session, things to pay out, uh, pay attention for in the lot uh, that play out later today. And uh, there's some opportunities there uh, going into the week as well. And it really just gives you a feel for uh, a different trading style and a different um, perspective on the markets. Because remember, these rooms aren't about whether or not you agree with me or I agree with a kill or Bob agrees with Fred. It's it's not about that. Uh, professional trading is about developing a plan and and be having the ability to come in and trade that plan with discipline every day. It's not about who agrees with who. As long as you have a plan and you have clear rules and you know that that plan develops or, or provides you with a return on investment, has a positive expectancy, then all you have to do is come in and trade that. So the idea of the room is you get to come in and see that trading is not always about being in a trade, it's not always exciting, you know, it's not about taking profits early, moving stops and all that horrible stuff. And it really just gives you the confidence if you're, if you're struggling to, to stick by your rules and say, well, no, if he's doing it, I'm doing it. And that really helped me out when I was, uh, when I was struggling. So take a look at the live room. Um, hope you enjoy it. Sit back and uh, I'll talk to you soon. Aussie Cat, everyone see my screen, everyone hear me okay? Everyone check out um, War Room yesterday with, with Charles. Done a good job. Just to bring you up to speed uh, on this Aussie dollar trade, we hit the uh, target ones just now. So if you was in that, well done. Um, cash register, let's ring the cash register for that one. Uh, so you got around 50 pips out of that. And we'll go to that pair next. So we'll quickly go through Aussie CAD. Not much happening. This is the consolidation pair. So you can see uh, bang, bang. We are consolidating. We did break that 9600 level. And we broke this higher, high, higher close here. We broke this previous high at 9654. And we didn't quite come up to where I expected to test as previous um, structure resistance up at around this level here at 97.76. Didn't quite test that. So I do have a bullish bias still. However, we are consolidating now. And by consolidating, I mean moving sideways. So went through this yesterday. Uh, you can see we came up, we tested, came down, tested. At this point, we'd be looking for a trend continuation. Okay, and then we just bounce up and down and we're just consolidating, right, moving between this channel here. So in this consolidation period, I just look for 
pattern formations. The only time I'll start to look for a trend continuation now is if we break above this high, then I can look for a retracement and I can look to get long. Okay, now Constellation's thrown this Gartley up. That's not a Gartley pattern for me. Okay, purely because I wouldn't see it. And if we delete this off of here, you're not going to see that trade, right? Look, I, I can't see that anymore. That isn't one that I would have back tested. Therefore, I don't want to get involved. And I always say to you guys, if you're using Constellation, make sure you do this. Okay, don't don't cheat yourself. Don't you know? Be true to yourself. Would you have test? Would have, would you have taken this in back testing? No. No. Okay. Uh, however, if we drop down to the 60. Okay. If we drop down to the 60, this is a valid pattern. For some reason, uh, Constellation hasn't got it on here anymore. Um, and if we bring on our Fibonacci extension tool. We still have a valid Gartley up here at 97.21. Okay, so if market pushes up, we've got a Gartley at 97.21. Stops would be above X. Now you have to measure out your stops. I use a Fibonacci inversion. So A to X, back down. Stops would go above 97.53. Uh, so about 30 pips of stop for risk with initial targets at the 382 and I'll just be taking conventional targets because we're consolidating sorry if I sound a bit more bunged up today than usual because I always sound bunged up but I've I've got a bit of a bit of a dodgy throat and nose I'm not sure if it's the old uh, the new hot tub <laughs> I think I overdid it on the chlorine <laughs> and plus we've been really rinsing that out this week um making the most of it so if market pushes up bearish Gartley formation at 97.21 okay now if market pushes down we've got a couple of couple of uh, options here this orange pattern again this orange uh, bat formation here isn't a pattern for me this is not an impulse leg in here and just to show you what I mean uh, and, and really show you clearly let's take this pattern off whoops let's take this uh this this gartley off um you see this pattern on constellation if i delete this you can't see it there's no way you can see that there's no impulse leg there what i can see what i can see is this pattern x to a a to b b to c CD completion and this will be a bullish Gartley formation down at 96 uh, 28 so a little bit higher there 96 28 it's not a deep Gartley formation so check your risk reward check your risk reward but my um, if I'm using my Fibonacci inversion based stop loss I know that my stops are going to have to go uh, at 95 96 Okay, with initial targets, initial targets being at that 382, so I'll have to check my risk reward here. You see I'm just getting over a one-to-one, -one, so it's going to be okay. If not, I'd have to let price action push down to give me a minimum one-to-one. -one. Remember what we said about yesterday about the, uh, the, the coin toss? Want to be right more than we're wrong and... We want to win more when we're right than we lose when we're wrong. And if we've got those two in our back pocket and we can trade that with absolute discipline, that puts us on a really, really, uh, it puts us in a really strong position. All we've got to do then is have the discipline to keep trading it through the losing periods. And I know you guys, you know, you guys hear me keep saying this. Um, you hear me keep saying this and, uh, it, you know, it is the truth. <laughs> and any professional trader who's who's struggled and and finally sort of realized and and looked back at what what the difference was in their trading to now to before when they were struggling that is the that is the only difference 
the ability to stick at one thing and develop it and consistently come in and trade it. Like I say, you, you're not going to trust your plan 100% until you've been for a drawdown, in my opinion. Because you want to see that loss and then you want to see that new equity high in your in your trading account. Having traded through that losing period, that drawdown. Okay, so that's what I'm looking at here, guys. I'm going to go over to Aussie dollar now. So if we bring out the Aussie dollar on the daily... Um, I was expecting, I'm expecting the higher to be tested here. You know, we've, we've identified that we've broken out of 7,500, uh, which was previous support, support. We had resist, um, resistance, 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 resistance. Then we broke through, putting in a new structure high. So as we came down, we still held this outside return here. Right, and if you can't see this, outside return, new structure high, we held this level. So I've got a bullish bias and I predict a retest of this high. Okay, now we may, we, we've identified that, you know, we've held this, this neckline. And we may set up for this head and shoulders formation here, but I've got an you know I've got a bullish bias and I'm predicting a move to this high here. So with that in mind, I'm looking for reasons to get long. Okay? Now if you trade off the dailies and market pushes right down here, there's a bullish cipher at 72.52. I don't trade off of the daily charts, uh, but if you do and you trade advanced patterns, well then there's a cipher down here at 72.52. Right, IPDE, identify the market's bullish, predict where it's likely to go. Well, I know I'm predicting, I don't know, but I'm predicting a retest of this high at least. Okay, so decide how we can get involved. That's the hard part, right? So we've already come down, we've tested this, uh, this low once, twice, three times, four times, five times, six times. Uh, and then we've we've started to rally. You know, this would have been the optimal area for a trend continuation trade. As we put in this new structure high here. New structure high, outside return, still a valid outside return. Okay. So this would have been uh, an area for a trend continuation trade. We then pushed up and come down and tested this level again. And I know some of you guys may have entered on this higher high higher closed candle here okay with your stops below x um but we actually got a bat formation in here so i entered this as a bat and rode this up and got targets out that way okay but now that's that pattern's completed we continue to push up i'm looking to reload how can i get involved one thing i'm looking at is this candle here i like the fact that we've come up We've ebbed and flowed. We've come down, tested this level here, okay, which was with some inside structure resistance here, resistance here, okay. We broke above, came down, and we held this level, and we held it once, twice, three times, four times, five times, six, seven, eight times with this low test candle wick here. What does this signify here? Market tried to push down on some news release and got sucked right back up. Basically, the uh, the bulls are rejecting the bears. The bears have tried to push down. The bulls have pushed back up and said, "Nope, we're not going that. We're not going down there." So as we've come up and broke out of that area, we've come down to test that level again. And I like the look of this level. RSI is going oversold question is how can I get involved well look at this <laughs> look at this an aggressive cipher entry we've come down we've tipped this cipher and we've hit target ones now if I was trading this I would still be in target one I'd be taking target one at a retest of the C leg and I'd be taking target twos up here but unfortunately, I couldn't get involved. Now, this would have been my aggressive entry. I wouldn't have had to get a higher high, 
higher closed candle, RSI oversold, okay, um, you know, and then look to place stops. And really, the stops are a problem for me on this as well. Because if I'm entering a higher, higher, higher closed candle, where do my stops have to go? Below this spike. Yeah. So if I'm putting my stops on ATR below the spike, and the ATR was 20 pips, okay, 20 pips below this spike, so uh, 50, 73, 50, um, entering a higher, higher, higher closed candle, um, which I came into the market around here. So that would be the higher, higher, higher close. Shooting for a retest of the high. Going to get a uh, a one-to-one -one risk reward there. So a nice, a decent trading opportunity there. Uh, this spike is is uh, a pain. Um, I just missed this completely, guys. I missed this trading opportunity. And... Uh, you know, that happens, that happens, I, I just got up, this had already happened, um, couldn't get involved, uh, Eileen, can you, pl says, can you please talk about the RSI, RSI, uh, yeah, the RSI is the relative strength index, okay, so it's the, uh, the, the RSI is the speed in which a currency is being sold, or a market is being sold, so if you imagine, um, Concert ticket sales, you know, for a, for a, I don't know, One Direction, <laughs> right? They go on sale, and as the lines open, all the best seats really quickly start to sell. Okay, so this the speed in which they're being sold is is extremely fast. Okay, uh, as the sale goes on, and the you know the worst tickets or the back tickets, or you know people just it's just running out of people on the phone ringing in the speed of the sale slows down okay so it's not it's not a um it's not the rsi has nothing to do with the range it has uh it's it's all to do with the volatility the the, the speed in which they are the market's transactions are taking place okay Imagine a, 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 a 100 meter sprint runner off the blocks, just as the gun goes, he's running, you know, as fast as he can. As he gets tired, he starts to slow down towards the end of the race. Uh, in relation to the trade, well, if I'm looking for a trend continuation trade and the, and the, the RSI is oversold, it's telling me that, you know, tip, conventionally, RSI is considered oversold below 30 and, and, and overbought above 70, right? Okay, um, it's it's on a scale of 0 to 100, and I have mine set to 20 and 80 to give me those extremes, those extreme levels, because I'm using it as a filter. So if I'm looking for a trend continuation trade, I'm looking at previous structure and structure support in this instance, and if RSI goes oversold, right, I'm using that to tell me it, that the that the market is running out of steam. Okay, so just in the in the analogy I just explained, the market's running out of steam, and it's likely to uh, we're likely to see a reaction at this level. Oh dear, is all I can say on this one. In fact, I've got oh dear written on my notes. <laughs> I've got oh dear written on my pre-market analysis. <laughs> um, we went down to one twenty-eight flat yesterday. Okay, now I've bought on the monthly chart, week, weekly chart, monthly chart, and I haven't even got historical data that goes down that low. And that I think my data on here goes back to 2006, uh, or what I looked at earlier did. And uh, this is the lowest we've ever been <laughs> since back then. So, hit an all-time low. Continuing bearish movement to the downside. We are bearish. We should look to get short, right? Predict where markets like to go. I don't know. <laughs> right? I don't know. Uh, but I know that if I follow my uh, my plan, I'm a trend continuation trader, not a trend following trader. So I'm essentially shooting for retest of, 
of this low. Okay, so what that means is I'll look to get short. Where's the first area to look to get short? Previous support. And as we drop down the time frames, I can now say that, well, I'm going to predict a retest of this low. All I need is a pullback. And if we get a pullback, then I can look at this area here as my kill zone to get short. Euro yen is on a, um, a decision point here, right? We've put in this double bottom. If we look out on the dailies, this double bottom is forming at previous resistance. There's some inside structure here, inside resistance level. Okay, then we broke out, we come down, and this is previous resistance. Now support, next level of support is, there's a few levels in here. Obviously this is going to be the most powerful down here. Um, we've got a bearish bias, we just want to bear in mind where we are. You know, just bear that in mind. Um, so this is a decision point. I don't want to get. Ex I don't want to sell this now. I'll sell this. I'll look to sell this when we break and close below this low here. For now, I just want to wait to see what happens. Now, if you're a if you're a um, counter trend trader. You're looking at this and looking to buy this as a double bottom, then you, know, you might be looking for RSI. Um, RSI wasn't oversold here, okay? But essentially, this is a, a double bottom. You know, this is where you, you conservative traders looking for a reversal would look for a break and close above this level, look for a pullback, and then you could look to buy this up long term as a as a reversal. We're well ahead of the game, right? We're just waiting to see what happens. Waiting to see what happens. Nothing on my uh, nothing on my radar here. If we drop down to lower time frame, we do have a Gartley. So any counter trend traders looking at that level, um, in fact, this will probably be a bit clearer on the hourly because you're going to see that A to B leg, B to C, C to D down at one. I think the Gartley completes at 110.27. Yeah, so 110.27. Stops going to be quite large. ATR is quite high on this pair. Uh, 45, 108.45, and your entry is at 110.27. Okay, so that's m m far too much um, risk for me. Can't get involved in that cipher, uh, that Gartley, sorry. But if you if you can, then there's your reason for entry. You also want to check your risk reward. You can see it's just going to be a one to one there, and you want to check if you're front running orders and things like that. You might um, find that you you actually got an inverse risk reward, which is something that I I like to stay away from. I think there was a cipher on the five minute oh we've got a um got a bat pattern by the looks of it bat pattern at 112.50 so if you're looking at this on the lower time frames not a bad opportunity okay we come down lower low lower close outside return lower low lower close outside return lower low lower close and as we push up to this level, which is the previous structure support, become resistance, become resistance. Okay, this would be a decent level. We've got that 112.50, which is a psychological number. That's where the bat pattern completes. So um, if you're looking to take this, stops above X. You could use this as your trend continuation move. So if I was to take this pattern now, I'd look to take targets down at a retest of the lows. One, two, three, three, almost three and a half to one risk reward. Let's bring on a dollar yen. Similar to, um, these, are, these are quite similar, these pairs. 
if you're looking at the dollar yen, very similar, but we, we're down at that decision point, um, which was this consolidation level. Now we held this level and we see this big low test candle wick here spiked back up. Okay, decision point. If we break down the next level I'm looking at is this consolidation. Okay, so effectively this level here at 98 flat. 98 flat. All right, so we're bearish, bearish, bearish. We're at this decision point here. Okay, we've spiked down and put in this low. Okay, um, we we came up, we put in an outside return. This is where I got, I was looking to get short, right? So we came up. Okay, so we had this previous high. A new structure low, followed by an outside return. Previous high here, structure resistance. Okay, we hadn't tested the low. And as we pushed up to test this high, we're looking for that whole analysis scenario again. So we're looking for under 100 pips of stop. We had a 20 pip or 25 pip ATR at the time. Okay, so I knew that my stop loss had to be 25 pips above um, the outside return high. So 103, so 103.47. Uh, 103.47. I think I was higher than that, actually. Let me just check. Uh, 103.53. Okay, so the, the ATR was a little bit higher at the time. 103.53, which meant that I could enter at 102.55. 102.55. So as long as I entered in this zone, right, you staying with me? Sticking with me? As long as I enter in this zone, I'm under 100 pips. As long as we don't violate this high. So the actual kill zone was this. Okay, this is the actual kill zone here. This is the kill zone. This is the stop loss. So this was the kill zone. This was the kill zone. So as we pushed up into this area, what do I need? We're in my zone. Your rules of entry to be met. Yeah, RSI, overbought. Yes, we pushed up. We came to this level. RSI, overbought. We went overbought at one uh, eighty eighty three point five RSI overbought. Yes, tick under a hundred pips of stop. Tick. What do I need? What do I need next? Lower, low, lower close. Yeah, absolutely. Where do we get that? We don't get it here. 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 Boom. We get it there. Sell next bar market. And there we go. Entered. I would have entered at this, but the next bar market opened, pushed up slightly. I got in at 102.71. Okay. And I've been in this uh, ever since. Um, targets that are retests of the lows. You see, we came down and hit that yesterday. I was in this trade for a long time, um, but we we ended up getting around 120 pips out of the move. So, uh, so very nice. So, New Zealand dollar then <clears throat> on the daily. I've got bullish bias. Bullish bias. Um, we put in a higher, higher, higher close here. We are at a level of uh, previous support support resistance okay next level of next level of resistance out on the higher time frame is up here at one uh, 0 0.7480 okay so i'm predicting a retest of at least this high which we haven't quite tested yet 
and we were tracing down uh, this outside return here was still valid. This would have been a decent um, decent trend continuation trading opportunity. I wasn't trading this pair at the time. I was eyeing this up because uh, I've been analysing this pair for about six months. Okay, uh, But I wasn't trading it until the 5th. So um, we've now made that move. We haven't quite tested the high and we're retracing down again now. We had a bearish day yesterday. Um, but I'm looking for the pullback. The pullback is happening. We've still got this valid uh, bat formation up at 72.61. So if we get up to that level, that will still be valid. Still be valid. Okay, you can see another couple of patterns setting up on these uh, on these swing trading time frames. Nice, nice cipher formation there. Seven sixty-eight o uh, sixty-eight o eight. And then there's a big bat formation at 67.46. Uh, That'll be far too large for me to take. Because we haven't tested this high, if we can get down to this level, this would be the best area for a trend continuation move, right? If we can test this support level again, we can look to get involved and ride this thing up. Can we get involved? That's the hard part. That is the hard part, okay? We've retraced down. RSI has gone oversold at this level. This level here. This level ties up with previous resistance. Becomes support. Okay, we've got a Fibonacci retracement. We're at a 618 retracement at this level as well. Okay, and this is a potential kill zone for a trend continuation move. All right. Now, if you was to get involved with this, stops. Stops would have to go below this low. So if you're bringing on an ATR. Um, ATR is 18 pips. So 18 pips below this low, that's going to put us at, <coughs> sorry guys, oh, uh, 38, 70, 38 for an ATR based stop. Looking for a retest of these highs. So you can see it's a nice risk award trade there I can enter this trade at market um, and I am going to take a shot at this now my rules are met 7100 70 30 yep order, order I'll take a shot at this now my rules are met so we've put in this higher 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 close I'm expecting a retest of this high up here Okay, so therefore I'm expecting a retest of this high here. Okay, we've come down, we've gone oversold on the RSI, we've come down to previous structure support. My stop loss can get within 100 pips below the previous support level. Okay, uh, and I'm going to look to take targets at a retest of this high now because this is so close together I'm going to take my full position off at this high so I'm going to take one target Order pending. okay get my stops in place here um, let's work this out properly stops so 18 pips um, I'm going to go 20 pips below the low which is going to be at 57 uh, 56, 36. Okay. So, 30. Sell stop. Order pending. And there we have it. So, we'll see how this one goes. Excellent risk reward. This is the type of trading setup that I want to be involved with every time. All right, guys, so that was it. Hopefully you uh, you got some in, a, a decent insight into the room. Like I say, we have the New York Live Room. We have uh, Charles running the War Room meeting this week. 
uh, usually run by Jason Stapleton. Charles will be doing more of our Forex market previews every week now, and we'll be running these videos regularly to keep that momentum going as well. Um, if you're interested in coming into the live room, go over to tradingpower.com, click on the London Live Room link, and you can come into either of the live rooms, New York or London, depending on what time frame suits you best. Uh, and you can come in free for a, for a week to see if you really like it and see what it's all about. Um, after about a week, the, um, the language and the terminology becomes almost second nature. It really starts to slow down. So I look forward to seeing you then. Until next time, take care. Got my trading powered mug today. Shiny object, yeah, <clears throat> yeah. The shiny object syndrome. Uh, we've, I've just, yeah, I've, I've recently written a, a small article about that. You know, the, the purpose of this room is you get to come in and see what trading is really about. Okay, so, you know, it's professional trading. It's not always about being in a trade. It's not about, not you know, taking profits early and getting excited. It's it's really not exciting. And being in this room sort of deters you away from searching for that next shiny object and really uh, helps you concentrate on developing the plan that you you know you're working so hard towards too many people get get deterred off and and they think that something else is better you know like the grass is greener uh, the grass is greener on, on the other side and you know you, you see this when people try and lose weight as well it's not just trading it's, it's everything humans they're trying to lose weight and they're, they're they're going through a fad diet hello Ian you know they're, they're doing a fad diet and they see a new fad diet and instead of sticking to you know the eating plan and the, the exercise regime that they've they've got on their their current plan right in order for that to become a habit and and actually see results uh, they switch to something else because they think that they'll see uh, better results because someone else has done it and um, you know they've got results so it must work so it's, it's similar to trading you know when traders take on a trading education journey I, I've done it you know I'm not, I'm not saying that I'm innocent I've done it as well but they they embark on their their trading education journey and they take a course and you know they learn some profitable strategies but then after learning that they have to actually put in lots of work back testing and forward testing and you know demo trading and you know or even if they've hit a live, if, even if they're trading live and they hit a drawdown, which is very common, they stop trading and rather than work on the system and, and build that discretion into their trading, they see another strategy that that Pip Daddy is uh, is is trading and um, <laughs> and they they basically close down everything they've done so far and they go over and start you know from square one um, and it's it's. It's very, very common. And I think really it boils down to that there's a couple of reasons they do this. One is that, you know, by jumping to something else, you know, whether that's weight loss or, or trading or whatever, it, by jumping to something else, it, it makes the person feel like they're, they're getting more progress. So they're making progress. You know, it, um, and, and, and everyone wants to make progress, right? Everyone wants to make progress, but in actual fact, it's a huge step back. It's a massive step back, and the, and the second reason they do it is because what? It's it's because of that old, you know, you want to be drawn to the easiest route. You think it's easier, so you're being drawn towards the pleasure, and and you're moving away from pain. Simple as that. And, and what you really need to understand is that to become good at anything, right? You need to to fall in love with the process of learning uh, and, and refining your skills uh, rather than thinking about the end cut you know the outcome and the the end result just just you know you just have to expect uh, to, to get the end result one day and then just immerse yourself in your system and, and do not you know do not deviate from that system yeah absolutely the truth that the, the the truth is, you know, there, there is no, there's no system that's, uh, there is no shiny object. An object is only shiny when it's polished. Right? 
So polish your object.